Hello and welcome to the Rock Christian family. If we haven't met before, my name is John. I'm pastor at the church and we have an amazing experience planned for you for the next 50 or so minutes. We're going to have uh, some music, some kids stuff. We're continuing our starting point series with week three where we're talking about getting past our past. And at the end of the service, I have a very special announcement to make. So make sure you stay tuned. So right now we're just going to hand it over to the band as they lead us in some music. Strange and lovely sound I hear it in the thunder and the rain It's ringing in the skies Like cannons in the night As the music of the universe plays We're singing you Born again to 
rescued me so I can stand and sing. I am a child of God. I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I'm a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. God, we just want to thank you that those words ring true, that we don't have to be afraid in any way, shape or form of the things that might... Um, bring fear into our lives or try to but we can actually trust you and that you are a good God that we can walk with each day and every time that we do feel scared or feel worried that we can come and we can lay those burdens before you and that you actually carry them for us and that we can walk with you hand in hand burden free knowing that you're a good and loving father amen never fails me in all my days I've been held in your hands from the moment that I wake up until I lay my head I will sing of the goodness of God all my life you have been faithful So, so good with every breath that I am able. Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire in darkest nights. You are close like no other. I've known you as a friend, and I have lived in the goodness of God. All my life you have been faithful, and all my life you have been so the goodness of God. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. I've been 
At the Rock Christian Family, we say that we lead the way with a rational generosity, and that's with our time, with our serving, with our volunteering. Um, it's also with our finances. And so what I want to do is I want to give you an opportunity right now to be generous. And we just call it giving, and all the ways that you can give are on the screen right now. And what that goes towards, that goes towards our international partners. Uh, we support an organization called Bloom Cafe. They do some amazing work in Cambodia. Uh, locally, we do things like Stable on the Strand and the Global Leadership Summit, which are still happening this year, just in a different capacity. And then also to have the vision of the church to be a church for everyone fulfilled. So that's what you're giving goes towards. If this is your first time or you're brand new, please, there's no pressure to give. And while you're doing that right now, we're going to give our kids an opportunity to engage. And so we're going to see what Dr. Flew and Dr. Gru have in store for them. Hi, Kids Rock. Great to see you guys again. Hope Absolutely. you had a good week. All right. What are we up to this week, Dr. Gru? Today, we're going to make some kinetic sand. Kinetic you have sand. everything in your science packs at home. Mm -hmm. And we're going to do it right now. So you'll need a cup of sand. All right, cup of sand. What's Oop. special? Oh, <laughs> what's special about kinetic sand, Dr. Gru? Well, kinetic sand can hold its shape a little bit better. Oh, cool. All righty. Got my sand. All right, you need a tablespoon. That's the big one here of corn flour. Oh, oh yes. Sorry. Thank oh. you. Probably need the other one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Mix it in a little bit. There we go. Mixy mix. All right. In a separate container, you're going to need to use your water and dish soap. Water, dish, dish, dish soap. So we need a cup, cup of water, water and a little bit of dish soap. Ooh, this smells pretty. <laughs> There's your dish soap. Thank you. Mix it up. Oh, it does smell good. <laughs> do we need to put colour in it too, Dr. Oh, Gray? I think so. That would be, that's a great all idea. Right. Here's all the colours. Now, you can use food colouring or a little bit of uh, the paint solution. All right. Seeing as it's already a bit green, I'm going to make mine green. <laughs> oh. Oh. Oh, just a little bit of my hands. <laughs> it's just a bit might get a bit messy. Messy, <laughs> messier than I thought it might be. All right, what next? All right, then you slowly mix it in okay. to the sand, just a little bit at a time, and mix it together. Mix, mix. So you get a mixing, nice mixing. kind of kinetic sand. Consistency. Ooh. All right, this is looking good. Yeah, mine's looking pretty good. Obviously, I don't need that much of that solution. Hey, this looks pretty stable. You're yeah, right. Yeah, it's, it's pretty cool and it feels really nice in your fingers. Do you think do you think I could build a house with it? Or make a, I could make a pot stand. Look at this, ready? You're going to put a pot on it? I'll no, Dr. Pot. Gru, it's not, no, you can't do that. Why not? Well, just because it's kinetic sand doesn't mean it's going to be stable. It's still sand. But, uh, this, it's a bit stronger than sand, I thought. Well, yeah, but it's still sand. Sand moves easily. You know, you can't put something on top of it like a pot plant. A sinkhole might even develop. A sinkhole? What's a sinkhole? Oh, a sinkhole? You don't know what that is? No. Well, did you know that underneath us, the earth is actually moving all the time? It's not as stable as we thought it was. Did you know even that there's these underground um, streams and rain and it erodes the soil underneath? We obviously don't know about it. We can't see it. But over time, it can erode so much that this thing called a sinkhole develops. And out of nowhere, poof, 
There's a big hole in the ground. Whoa, no way. Uh huh. Did you even know that in America, a sinkhole developed in a car museum and all these cars, like eight cars, fell down into the hole? We've got Whoa. a picture. Let's Wanna see? see? It. Yeah. Okay. Whoa. Wow. <laughs> That's a big sinkhole. That hey. is. Wow. Yeah, so you've got to be careful with this stuff. Mm, mm. Builders have to be super careful as well and make sure they know what soil they're building on before they build the house. Oh, now that you're talking about did you know that Jesus talked about sinkholes in the Bible? Jesus talked about sinkholes in the Bible? I don't think so. Yeah, well, not exactly. You see, he talked about builders and how they have to be really careful about where they build. Ah. And, so, and it's important that we build our lives on the right stuff. You see... There's a lot of things we can build our lives on, but they're not all that great. Just like it's not good to build your life on sand. We need to build it on rock. You see, we could build our lives on money or fame or um, being smart and all the, being really good at things. But all these things doesn't, isn't going to make be a strong foundation and our lives can fall apart. That's true, Dr. Guru. And they're not bad things by themselves, but if we build our lives on them, mm. well, that doesn't turn out very well, does it? No. Sometimes they shift and they change. That's right. And, you know, the, well, what, who's going to be there for us then? What can we build our lives on? Well, there's only one thing that's strong enough to build our lives oh, on. What's and that That one thing? is God. God never changes. He's always the same, yesterday, today, and forever. Wow. So mm. we can build our lives on God and we can count on him that he's never going to change. That's right. Wow. And that is why God is great. We sure have proved God is great. Yeah, absolutely. Have Thanks a great for week, kids. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. See you later. Bye. Just like your life has a starting point, just like your careers, your relationships, your parenthood has starting point, sometimes we forget that our faith has a starting point as well. And so what we've been doing for the last two weeks is just hitting the restart button on our faith. We've been talking about the starting point for the Christian faith is the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And that our relationship with Jesus is that. It's a relationship and we don't live our life based off a bunch of rules. And this week what we're going to do is we're going to look at how do you get past your past? Because let's be honest, sometimes we just have this baggage that we carry around. It's like a shadow. It just, it never leaves us. And we want to talk about how do you get past your past? How do you leave the baggage behind? Well, welcome to week three of our starting point series where we've realized that um, often we need to hit the restart button on our faith because what we are taught as kids, as child, uh, that sort of faith of what we are taught to believe doesn't withstand the pressures of our adult life. And so what we're doing right now is we're sort of discussing if you had never been to church, if you had never opened a Bible before, if you had no idea what Christianity was, what would your starting point be? And the starting point is the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And so that's what we talked about in week one. Last week, if you'll remember, we discussed this whole topic of rules of relationship. And sometimes subconsciously, we can live our life following these sets of rules. And that's really sort of the old covenant way of um, following God. But Jesus came and he he had this whole new sort of brand, this whole new style of life where it's all about love. It's all about loving God. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And then love your neighbor as yourself. But we, re we capped it off by this statement that Jesus says at his Last Supper where he says, As I have loved you, so you must love one another. And we discovered that that is just far more demanding mm -hmm. than the 613 laws that were there in the Old Covenant. And um, today what we're going to do is we're going to tackle quite a large subject when it comes to Christianity. And it's this word called sin. Mm -hmm. And we're actually looking at how do you get past your past? And I know even for Christians, we hear this word sin so often uh, in the Bible, in church, and we think we know what it means, but we might not actually grasp the, the whole concept of it. And especially if you've never been to church before, that word sin uh, can be quite a daunting slash weird word. And so, uh, Lauren, I just love you to expand on this whole theme of sin. What What is it? Why is it uh, such a highly used word in our Christian living? Yeah, it's a good question. And you know, sin is something that we, nobody likes being called a sinner, right? No. But 
It's such an important question for us to understand, an important topic for us to understand. And the way I've come to know sin and understand sin is it has to do a lot with our actions, but it also has to do a lot with our behaviors and our thoughts and our attitudes. Yeah. So it's as much about our orientation as it is about the things that we do. Uh, one of the most common words uh, in the Hebrew that is used for the word sin has a reference to missing the mark. Okay. And I think that that's a really helpful way of understanding sin because quite often it is a perversion of what is actually a really healthy desire. So, for example, we talk about gossip, right? And people gossip and know that gossip is a sin. But really underlying gossip is just a need to be accepted. And similarly, with uh, somebody who might be trapped in a pornography addiction, for example, there's a need to be loved there, a need to, to feel loved and express love, but it's really missing the mark in a really unhealthy way. Hmm. Now, when we miss the mark, it's very easy to feel shame and feel guilt. Yeah. And those are often attributed with sin. And we know when we've done those things, we can really feel that in our conscience. And... God said right at the beginning that the consequences of sin is death. Yeah. And we know that lust will kill a marriage and mm -hmm. gossip will kill relationships. And in many ways, the things that we know of sin are going to kill or lead to the death of things that are important in our lives. But more important than anything is the relationship that we have with God. And sin yeah. is actually the things that remove us because within God, there is no sin. Mm -hmm. And so these are the things that demonstrate that we're human, is that we're sinful, where as God has a standard that is free from sin. Mm -hmm. And so uh, as we read the Old Testament, we see all of these stories about people who are really missing the mark. And a lot of people critique the Old Testament and say, why would you read about all of these horrible stories of crazy violence and all sorts of adultery and so forth? Well, it's really God's story of dealing with people who have missed the mark. Mm -hmm. And it's his attempt to redeem them and guide them back into a place where they're being right living. And finally, in the New Testament, we see Christ, we see Jesus, who is this model of a sin-free person living on earth, mm. demonstrating to humanity what it means to live without sin. Mm. So in that sense, it's really exciting because finally we have a model of who was doing it in terms of living without sin on earth. Mm. But he took that a step further. And all of the elaborate things that we do to cover up our shame and cover mm. up our guilt and mm. the atonement sacrifices that you read about in the Old Testament and all the other elaborate ways that people cover up, you know, the consequences of sin and, and, and death and so forth. Right. Jesus took that yeah. and he took those requirements that sacrifice he mm. took all of it and said it is finished yeah and in jesus he bore the brunt of that and demonstrated fully that the consequences of sin is death yeah um, but then also demonstrated that the divine god can't be restrained by that and death is not the end of that story mm. and so we're finally left with a picture where we have the resurrection of christ leading to a new way of living in union with god mm. that has offered forgiveness from sin mm. and an opportunity to walk forward in that restored relationship mm. where yeah. you're equipped to be able to have a i wouldn't say necessarily a sin-free life because we're all aspiring towards that but with the awareness that we're going to stumble, that we're going to fall, he's given us the ability to walk in freedom uh, moving forward in, um, in right relationship without the guilt, without the shame, and without the bondage that comes from just feeling dirty and yeah. knowing the consequences yeah. of that. So. I loved how you put so much, so much of that was so good. Um, but one thing that really stuck out to me is where you're talking about how the way the sin is death right um the wage of sin is death and you talked about how you know our lust often kills our marriage and for so many people who have not been to church before who have not um, opened a bible before who could almost care less about some of the sin in their life i mean what does it i'm not a follower of jesus i don't um fall under those sort of expectations but this is so relevant for everyone, no matter where you are, right? Because these are principles in our life that are going to make our life better, whether you're a follower of Jesus or not. Mm -hmm. Being faithful to your wife or your husband, mm -hmm. that's going to really have give you a rich life. Mm -hmm. um, being generous, mm -hmm. that's going to give you a, a rich life. Being selfless. And so sin, this, I mean, yes, the major part of it is that God is is perfect. He sent His Son Jesus mm -hmm. to to die for our sins, so that we could be in a relationship with Him, um, and that is 
I guess the the mark that we, you're talking about the mark that's what's so important to us. Um, but this is for everyone. Mm. This is for everyone. And I, I remember uh, growing up as a kid, I was always taught. We talked about this in week one. Taught to you know pray for forgiveness for your sin. And I don't know about you guys, but when I was a kid, my my sins weren't that grand. I wasn't <laughs> capable of doing much. Um, mm. I you know I might. I can't even think of something that I do as a kid, but it's something that I could move on from within the hour or even within the five minutes. Um, but as we get older, those sins begin to get bigger and they begin to, the bigger the sin, the added shame that we have in our life. You talked about that, Lauren. The bigger the sin, the more guilt we feel. The bigger the sin, uh, this embarrassment sort of follows us around like a shadow. We just, we can't get away from it. And I think um, we, we talk about uh, the enemy, right? And the enemy, the devil wants to keep that sin silent. He wants to that to follow around wants it to follow you around with that shame, with that guilt. Everything in us, the shame, the embarrassment, the guilt, wants to keep that silent. Mm -hmm. Um, But what was so important to sort of get rid of that silent, get rid of that shame and that guilt Mm -hmm. was A, I mean, you continue to pray for forgiveness um, to God, but B, to bring it to the light, Mm -hmm. to not hide it. Mm -hmm. Because there, I mean, you have this tendency to think, well, I'm the only one that's going through this. Mm -hmm. I'm such a bad Christian, I'm such a bad uh, boyfriend, fiance, uh, husband, mm. and um, you you are tempted to keep it quiet. But how you need to get past the shame and the embarrassment and the guilt is to bring these things to the light, mm. Um, mm. because they are things that can really hold you back. I'll just tell a quick story. I remember uh, it was a few years ago. I, I had this, um, I guess, prophetic word, which is somebody. Um, hearing from God and sharing what they're hearing over your life. And uh, we were up camping and I just, this, this specific person felt like I was being held back. I was just being held back by, by something. And he just had this vision of like running, but with a parachute behind you running with a parachute, something that you're not able to really walk into the fulfillment of your life, to have that John 10, 10 life of life and life to the full. Mm -hmm. And I still have this knife that he gave me. Uh, and he said, it's time to cut the parachute away mm-hmm. to, to bring whatever it is into the light and, mm-hmm. and live your life full. And I mean, I'd never forget that moment. I never forget the freedom that was in that moment for me, just bringing these things to the life. And mm-hmm. so there are things that we struggle with as we get older that <laughs> really, I believe only one thing can wipe it away, wipe the sin away. Mm-hmm. And that's Jesus Christ. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, as a young man, I remember <clears throat> and still struggling with pride. And uh, <clears throat> one of the one of the ways that Satan kind of wins in our life is he gets us to think that we're the only one who suffer from this. Yeah, we're on our own. There's nobody else. It's just you. But as I've shared this with so many people, I've recognised that it's actually probably one of the greatest things that Western culture struggle with is that I, I won't share my innermost secrets yeah. with people because uh, they'll think bad of me or mm. I'll, they won't, they won't uh, think as highly of me as they do. But actually the whole thing was driven on pride and when I was prepared to just walk openly with mm. people, mm. it just ushered a new season into yeah. my life. Mm. It just it mm. could transformed a whole new way of thinking particularly and also intimacy with those who I shared it with yeah and uh, I want to be real here for a second and um, with you people that are watching this and and you guys I'm sure would is um, it, we live in a big bad world and mm. I don't think for a second we should be sharing our sin with the wider world but I think that that's where the blessing of some really good Christian friends comes involved mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. In, and, and friends who've got our best interests at heart, mm-hmm. who we can share things with. Mm-hmm. We, can, we can say, can you hold me accountable on this? Can, I'm struggling on this. Mm-hmm. And there'll be, you, you'll see not, not small changes in your life. You see massive changes in your life mm-hmm. when you're prepared to be accountable to one or two or three or a few people close mm-hmm. to you in life, people who don't want to run you down. Mm-hmm. People who don't want to see Ben at his worst, but actually love me 
so much that they want to see me in my full potential. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's that's just, I think that's what the Christian family is about. Yeah. And, yeah. and I think that's what it means to take sin into the light. Mm-hmm. It has no power. Yeah. It has no power. There's yeah. no authority. There's no strength once it's brought into the light. It yeah. kind of almost dissipates mm-hmm. the darkness. Yeah. It just dissipates. Yeah. And when, you know, I love that, that you have these two or three friends that you can be accountable to that are going to help you overcome what you're struggling with. Mm. Because the powerful thing about overcoming things is, I mean, you still have the scars. And I know for me, I've got scars on my leg. and I know the stories of each scar. And once you sort of overcome those hurdles, those barriers in your life, that's a story that's going to encourage someone. That's a story that's going to encourage someone get past whatever they're struggling with. And so, yeah, like you said, we have a value at the church that we're better together. Mm-hmm. And that's exactly what you're talking about uh, awesome. to overcome what yeah. we're going through. We need one another. Mm. Um, and it's, then, it's massively liberating too. Oh, yeah. it's, it's, it's like the weight of just tons and tons and tons. I remember a friend of mine saying to me a few years ago, he said, Ben, what's going on? Mm. I said, why? And he said, you look like you're carrying the weight of the world on mm. your shoulders. Mm. And he looked me in the eye, and this is a person who loves me really deeply and loves me really, really, I can honestly say still to this day, he cares about me greatly. And he said, "This the scriptures say this, take my yoke, my burden is light. Yeah. Mm. You look like you're carrying the world on your shoulders. Yeah. Yeah. What's going on? Yeah. yeah. And when you when you literally just come to that realization and, and and sometimes for me it was it was it was kind of wrapped up in pride. When you come to that realization, you almost bounce as you walk. Mm-hmm. You just feel light. Yeah. It's like losing kilos of weight in a second. You know, it's I feel like I can run now when I've been struggling to get out of bed. Yeah. yeah. You know. Yeah, I think is, oh, you carry on. Oh, I was just going to say, like, that's something that's so beautiful about the kingdom of heaven. And when we talk about it in terms of like a kingdom, we have our global systems or we have our political systems right now or, you know, that label people in a particular way. So, you know, the sporting athlete who takes drugs is the drug cheat and they've got that label and you always know them as the drug cheat. Yeah. Or the person who gets put in jail or whatever has always got that stigma that they've got to put on their job applications or whatever the case might be that they've been in prison and so forth. And so we're so accustomed to knowing that our bad behavior defines who we are in some case, in, in many cases in the world around us. And it's just part of it. Right. And so why wouldn't I want to hide? Why wouldn't I want to mm-hmm. like not let people know the authentic person of who I am? Because if they really did know, then surely they're not going to like me as much as, as you know, they do now, like if they knew those secrets. Mm-hmm. And I think when we look at, you know, getting over our past and, and getting over our sin and these accountability and stuff like that is that we're being invited into a way of living a mm-hmm. kingdom, if you will, yeah. in which our sin is forgiven, mm-hmm. you know, and the, the person who forgives our sin is accepting of us. And mm-hmm. if we confess our sin to, to God, he forgives us and says, mm-hmm. come, let's figure it out and let's get over mm-hmm. it and gives us, you know, encouragements about how to live in community in a way where we don't have to do that by ourselves. Yeah. And it's incredible. Yes. Yeah. 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 Following Jesus makes your life better and makes you better at yeah. life for sure. Yeah. I mean, I love what Ben was saying about that giving over to Jesus, you know, when he talks about, you know, I want to take the weight I want to mm-hmm. take, you know, take my yoke or take my what I want to give to you because it's easy for you to carry and I'll take this stuff that's just too hard for you to carry. Mm. And that's the the guilt and the shame, you know. Mm. And guilt and shame doesn't come from God. Mm. You know, mm. It comes from, as a result of our sin, but it, it, it's something I believe that Satan puts on us, you know. Mm. Um, and God wants to, you know, the Holy Spirit comes and convicts us of our sin so that we can turn around and change. But mm. the guilt and the shame is something that, that's horrible and hidden mm. and, and that we hold on to. And, and I know, I mean, I've been a Christian all my life and as far as I can remember, but doesn't make me a perfect person. And I, I can't think that I've done anything really bad in terms of what humans would say, mm. you know, as, as people would say is a really bad thing to do. Mm. But that doesn't mean that I haven't sinned, you know, that mm. there's plenty of things that, mm. that weigh on me as guilt mm. and shame. And, mm. and I find that even living as a Christian, I don't know if you relate to this, but uh, and particularly as being a pastor where you think, you know, you get these voices that say, 
what right have you got to be yeah. speaking into people's lives, you yeah. know, when you, yeah. you're still mucked up in this area or that area yeah. and all the rest of it and you suddenly realise, oh, that's that's guilt and shame. That's not coming from God, you mm-hmm. know. Um, sure, I'm still struggling with some things but but we're dealing with it and, and I'm bringing it to God mm-hmm. and then God just lifts that off you, you know, mm-hmm. and it just takes that, that guilt and the shame off you. And it's not mm-hmm. like you're sinless but you don't have that, that weight on you anymore and then you can actually, you know, sometimes it's an, it's an excuse not to be doing stuff for God because you think, well, I'm not good enough, you know, yeah. and it's not about that. Yeah, so. and I think it's so important for for us, for churches to not shy away from these topics, right? Mm. Not shy away from their the reality that there are some things that people struggle with. There are some things that we struggle with. Um and to be able to bring these things to the light, to create a comfortability around sharing with those people in your life uh, what you're actually going through, to be real, mm-hmm. to be open, um, to help you get you past your past. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just just to transition gears a little bit as we um, almost wrap up mm-hmm. this conversation, um, at the beginning of Jesus's ministry, um, so after the Christmas story and it sort of goes a few years uh, ahead he's starting his ministry and meanwhile john the baptist is baptizing all these people and um, people are thinking that he's the one that sort of had been promised but he says no no it is it is not me there is someone far greater than i who is coming um and he i'm just paraphrasing here but eventually he he sees jesus and he says something that is so substantial but sometimes we can just pass over it. And Ben, I was just wondering if you could just expand on that. Yeah, so Jesus walks down the beach, as you're saying, John, and and, um, and he looks at John the Baptist and he's, and John the Baptist calls out to him and refers to him as the Lamb of God. Mm. And this is massively sig- significant for the Jewish people and the hearers of the time. Even the, even the Gentiles would have known this phrase, Lamb of God. Because it takes us all the way back to the Egyptian world, uh, back to the the, the Jews uh, and the Pharisees. Sorry, the um, coming back. It takes us all the way back to the the Israelite people in slavery, and the angel of death was going to come and take out the firstborns in all the house, and the Israelite people were taught were told to sacrifice the lamb, and it wasn't wasn't their worst lamb was their best lamb, mm-hmm. the smallest, the most angelic, the purest, to sacrifice that, to take a, a blade to it and then to put blood above their door. And if they did that, if they were obedient to God, then the, the angel of death that would just pass completely over that house. And at the Passover meal, Jesus refers to himself as the lamb of God, the ultimate sacrifice. Mm. And I think the significance of this is that, that Jesus at, at, at Calvary, he doesn't just take away our sin, he just removes it completely mm. like it was never there. Mm. It's not, oh, look, I've taken it away and there's still there's still stain of it there. The stain's gone. And before God, he doesn't even remember it. Mm. He's got no recollection of it. There's nothing. We're completely pure as we stand before God. Mm. And this is massive for us, right? Because we, we get our head around this and we, we, we start to think about this, then, then we can, by faith, that Jesus did achieve that, mm. by believing that, that we can come directly to God and seek his will on our lives. Yeah. And, and ask for him to, to help us to not repeat that sin. Mm. To help us to live in a different way, to guide us in our life. It's just the most beautiful thing. As a pastor, and you guys would have had the same, I've had non-Christian friends say, oh, can you can you say a couple of things in the good books uh, to the to the fellow upstairs for me to get me in the good books, you know, or or can you help me with uh, my 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 relative who's sick? And I say to them, by faith in Jesus. You have as much authority as I yeah, do. Yeah, wow. You have as much authority at home watching this as any of us around this table do. Mm. That we can go directly to God yeah. because we've got God, the Lamb of God, the Lamb, the perfect Lamb, the perfect sacrifice has achieved on our behalf. And so we almost got no 
the excuse not to walk forward mm. from that. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And I think what is looking at Jesus's ministry, and then we'll wrap up. Um, he was always around people that were nothing like him, but they liked him. And there wasn't this, he didn't have this expectation that you had to have it all together before you come to him. He didn't have this expectation that you have to be completely past whatever you're struggling with. He didn't have this expectation that you have to be perfect to be in his presence. No, actually, he didn't want that because he wants to do life with us. He wants to journey with us. He wants to be a part of the process of getting past our past. He doesn't want us to get past our past on our own, right? He he doesn't want us to um, leave him out of the process. He wants to be a part of that. And sometimes we think, are we good enough? Do I have, I've got too much baggage to to decide to follow Jesus today. I mean, if he knew what I did in my life, then there's no way that he would actually accept me as a part of his family. Mm -hmm. And I mean, Jesus, when he's call calling his followers, when he's calling Matthew, who's a tax collector, who no one really liked him, he was an outcast, he was doing all this for his own benefit. Jesus didn't say, uh, get your life together, stop stealing money, and then come follow me. Mm -hmm. He didn't say drop everything, drop everything you're doing right now, have this radical life transformation before you come follow me. No, he just walked up to Matthew and he said, follow me, mm -hmm. follow me. Mm -hmm. um, that's such a beautiful picture of the heart of God, mm -hmm. that you don't have to have it all together because we don't. Mm -hmm. You don't have to have it all together to be in a relationship mm -hmm. with him. Mm -hmm. And uh, he sent his son Jesus and said, it is done. Mm -hmm. I mean, so many religious systems talk about you have to work, work, work away your mistakes. You got to mm -hmm. work for it, work for the grace, mm -hmm. work for the relationship. Mm -hmm. They say, do, do, do. But Jesus says, it's done. It's mm -hmm. done. Come Amen. follow me. Mm -hmm. I think it's really important for us in our own walk with Jesus to understand his mathematics. You see, life in, in our lives today, we know that we live for 60, 70, 80 years, 90 years, and then we die and that's the end. And for most people in our culture, and maybe for some of you at home, that's the way you look at life, mm. that you live here, hopefully as a good person, and maybe you'll get into heaven. That's, that's, that's not the way God's economy works. In fact, God's economy works that there can be life after death. And that, that's, that's, the, that's the message of the cross, I believe, mm. of sin, is that when we put sin in our life to death, we're liberated and we can live mm. past it. Mm. You see, as Christian people, we believe, I, I strongly hold to this, that life happens after death, not death happens after life. Mm. And so right now, wherever you are, if you're at home, I wonder if you would just take time to maybe think about your own life. Is there areas of your life that you need to repent or you need to bring to God. Maybe you need to share with a friend or maybe you need to bring to a mentor or to one of your pastoral friends and to share with so that you can put to death things in order to live for Jesus. One of the beautiful, most beautiful analogies I think I, I ever have of this is uh, I love walking the beach. And one of the reasons I love walking the beach is that the Lord cleans it twice a day with the tide. And I love walking down the beach and I love walking down to the low tide line and I love confessing before God there, Lord, I'm sorry I did this. Lord, help me do better at that. Lord, I need to bring this to you. Sometimes I've even done it with mates, Christian mates, and sometimes I've had people who've done it with me also. And just leave it at that low tide line knowing that God's going to wash it clean. Yeah. Just the same as he washes my heart clean during that prayer. And so I just encourage you, perhaps you want to pause right now for a few moments and just ask God to do a work on your own heart, mm. just to wash your own heart clean. Maybe there's a stain of a conversation. Maybe there's a stain of something you've done. Maybe it's a rhetorical thing. I want you to know that what God achieved at Calvary means that there can be life past 
this. We are not bound as Christian people, as people who believe that Jesus is the risen King. We're not bound to our 80 years. Eternity starts now in Jesus. That's awesome. And, and if you're at home and you feel like you're ready to take that step and you just you don't really know how, um, please get in contact with us. Or if you have taken that step, contact us because we'd love to celebrate with you. We'd love to celebrate this decision that you've made in your life. Uh, you might be watching this as a part of our starting point series, as a part of our starting point connect groups. Uh, there's going to be a leader with you right now that can take you more in depth of what this looks like. Um, but we'd just love to hear from you if you decided to take a step and put your trust in Jesus Christ or take a step towards that. Um, thank you guys so much for being a part of this powerful conversation. I'm sure um, people at home have just gotten so much out of today Mm -hmm. because we all need to get past our past Mm -hmm. and Jesus wants to be a part of that process. So uh, we can't wait for next week. A value at the church say we lead the way with irrational generosity, Mm -hmm. but there is a stigma around the church that all we want is people's money. Mm -hmm. Um, But that is not the case. So we're going to bring to light these values of generosity and what that looks like because believe it or not, It's not about the money. So can't wait to see you guys next week. Well, please don't let the conversation stop here. There are so many opportunities that you can continue this conversation that we had today. And I did say that I have some exciting news. I have an exciting announcement and here it is. August 23rd, mark it in your calendars. August 23rd is when we're gonna come back as the Rock Christian family meeting together in person. I'm not going to give you all the details of what that's going to look like right now. You just stay tuned to videos on Facebook and future services. We'll give you more logistical uh, announcements on what it's going to look like. But August 23rd, we will be meeting back if you're here in Townsville at the Modern Conference Center. And um, if you're not in Townsville or you just don't think you can make those dates, don't worry. We're going to continue to do services online as well. And so August 23rd, mark in your calendars, and I can't wait to see you next week for week four of Starting Point.